Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in May. Different location, camera might be a little bit shaky. Um, I have not been feeling the best today. Um, <laughs> I think I got glutened and it has been kind of a rough day a little bit yeah that's why we're gonna be sitting in my bed with my pup i'm i'm not really feeling going to get all my filming equipment out and all the books and stuff so i just have my computer sitting next to me and we're gonna be talking about all of the books that i've read in may I actually read quite a few i honestly didn't think that i read that many and then i'm looking back and i actually did also if you hear any sounds or stop the, <laughs> the camera shakes or something um my cat is like obsessed with my power cord chargers and um he's like trying to get them dude here's the culprit and here's the culprit <laughs> anyway i'll try to make sure not to shake the camera or i'll try to make sure the cat doesn't shake the camera um but you're currently sitting on my bed right now so actually when i first started my booktube channel i actually did film on my bed quite a bit and all you can see is this the entire time because i'm a hand talker and it shook the screen or the the tripod that I had quite a lot so I'm gonna make sure to be gentler okay but let's get into these books and now he's trying to eat my iPad let's not let's not he's like trouble he is trouble with a capital T um, he has definite like ginger cat orange cat vibes like have you seen those like videos and stuff like ginger cats are like a whole nother breed in and of itself so <laughs> Anyway, um, I love him though. I love him. First book that I ended up reading in May is Mary in Haste by Anne Gracie. This is the first book in her Marriage and Convenience series. I read all these books in the series this month because I read a different Anne Gracie book. I think um, The Autumn Bride or something like that at the end of April. And I was like in love with it, but Libby didn't have the rest of that series. So I was like, let's go pick up some different Anne Gracie books. I thought these were really fun. If you want romances with like found family vibes and like a big emphasis on family. I really recommend this series. So this whole series is basically about this one family. The hero of the story is our like oldest brother. He just inherited, what is it? Like an earldom or a lord? I don't know what he inherited. He inherited some title. And with that, he now has custody of his two younger sisters as well as his niece. And he needs somebody to kind of like wrangle in all these women, all these girls. And so he finds a school teacher to marry. And that's our heroine. This series is actually pretty fun. I think I'm just gonna talk about all these at once, even though I didn't read them back to back to back because I'm already been talking about this series, but this one is actually pretty good. Um, I do have others, other favorite in the series. I think number two is my favorite, which I'll get to that in a second. This one though has different social classes. Great banter. It's a guardian read. So the hero is a guardian. Um, it's a historical romance, the first book in a historical romance series. And there is a marriage of convenience. Book number two is Marion Scandal. That one's my favorite. It's about one of those sisters that the hero gets custody of with her like a little bit more grown. Um, we have plus size representation, even though it's not on the cover. That pisses me off with historicals. Okay. Um, plus size representation. And then we also have a heroine who has dyslexia. And this was back in the day when dyslexia wasn't known. Dyslexia wasn't really like, didn't know what it was. So she has felt like absolutely inferior her entire life because she cannot read. I think her father even used to bully her because she couldn't read. Like he thought he was, she was so dumb. She's like, I literally, I try so hard. I literally can't do it. I don't know, I don't know what is going on. So she feels horrible about herself. Enter our hero who is our um, hero from book one's like best, best man. I mean, he was the best man at the wedding. Anyway, this heroine ends up getting kidnapped by some guy trying to steal her fortune. Basically, she escapes from that guy for a second and our hero ends up rescuing her and this whole scandal starts up and people think that she ran away with him when that is not the case. So they get married to sa to save her reputation. Um, but then like, they actually start to fall in love with each other. Like they're hardcore crushing and loving on each other. This one's my favorite in the series for sure. This one has brother's best friend, dyslexia representation, heroine falls first. Historical romance, uh, historicals with disability representation, marriage of convenience, plus size rep, a ruined heroine, and the savior trope. I love a good like savior trope. I don't feel like we get a lot of those where the hero like swoops in to say literally save the heroine's life. Like I am obsessed with those. And book number three is Mary in Secret, which is about well, the other sister. Okay, um, her romance. It's kind of like second chance. Um, she is set on marrying a duke. Our hero busts through the church doors and is like, uh, she can't get married. She's my wife, and she's like 
uh, I thought you were dead. Um, so it turns out they actually got married like years ago when they were younger um, and she honestly thought that he was dead and it's them like reconnecting and stuff. When a second chance, historical romance and you have a stop the wedding scene, which is so fun, so fun. And then the last one is Mary and Scarlet, which is about the Duke who got kind of like jilted at the altar in that last book. And um, a woman he like kind of like despises, which is the sister who was supposed to marry's uh, cousin, I think. Anyway, they're related. They're, they're related in some fashion. This heroine gives me Eloise Bridgerton vibes. She doesn't want to get married. She just wants to wait until she turns like 25 in order to get her fortune and like live the rest of her days as a spinster with her dog on like a farm or something. I thought this was a great conclusion to the series. I do recommend reading them in order just by the way, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Um, has Dukes, it's a historical romance, opposites attract and a ruined heroine. I've been doing a few Ruby Dixon rereads because they are just like a comfort read for me, especially if I don't know what to read. And um, I've been, I've re been really, doing horrible with sleeping recently and these books like they're not boring in the fact that they help me go to sleep because they're boring it's like i feel so comforted and loved when i read these books because i just do that um these books definitely help me like calm down before i sleep i don't know why my anxiety just rears its ugly freaking head before bed it does i don't know about y'all and i take my anxiety medication in the morning so <laughs> yeah anyway I decided to reread Fire in Her Eyes, which is one of my favorite Ruby Dixon books ever. It's my favorite in the Fireblood Dragon series. You have a heroine who is a dragon shifter and she finds out her fated mate is this human man who lives on earth in like this post-apocalyptic setting. I definitely recommend reading these books in order because this hero was like, we met him in a previous book, so. But this one is honestly so fun. My favorite in the series. I definitely recommend um, the Fireblood Dragon series if you just want fun, like good old time. This one is Alien Romance. Uh, books with pets the hero has a dog in like this post-apocalyptic setting which is very interesting dragon shifter kindle limited it's a paranormal romance and it's about a shifter i also finally read root bound by tara dewitt i finally am caught up on all of her backlist i just have to read her new release savor it which literally came out like a few days ago i think it's waiting on my libby right now to listen to this one gave me a lot of the same vibes as rustic hearts by amber kelly where we have kind of like a city girl goes back to her dad's ranch and uh, kind of like reconnects with him and his family. However, she is on site for a job. She's a photographer and she's been hired to like take pictures of this TV show that um, uses her father's ranch as a set, if you will. And so she's been tasked to take photographs. Anyway, she falls for one of like the guys who lives on the ranch and helps out on the ranch. This one was good. I do prefer Tara's other books to this. I'm pretty sure this was her debut book. So I feel like that's showing that she's just growing in her writing. So, but I definitely recommend it if you want like a small town read that's set on a ranch. And I do love all like the photographer vibes. My mom is a photographer. So I love just the discussion of that. My cat is ripping up my mattress. Hey, and I just woke up the dog. I'm sorry, Katniss. <laughs> uh, anyway, so for tropes for this one, it's a photographer and a small town romance for sure. And then again, it's gonna be in my, if you like this, read this video whenever that comes out because I definitely really recommend this book if you love Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. Next, I read one that was like really surprising that I really enjoyed. This is Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. I immediately messaged McKay after I read this because she was like the biggest cheerleader for this series, I swear. This is the first book in the Devil's Night series. I have read a few Penn Douglas books, but I've never read this one. And I know that if you like darker books, you should pick this series up. This one is about our heroine who... I think, ooh, how long ago was it? A few years ago, um, she got pulled into this certain group during Devil's Night, which is an interesting night in their town. I, I don't want to spoil anything. This book is a great book to go in blind for if you like dark romance or you want to get into dark romance. After that night, four of the guys that she was with that night, or three of the guys she was with that night, <laughs> ended up going to jail. And um, they're now out of jail and they want revenge because they think that she is to blame. For them going to jail so it's a romance with one of the guys who actually with the guy that didn't end up going to jail but it's in that friend group i don't really know how to describe it go into this book blind it was a wild fun ride i need book number two now like i am dying for it libby takes forever for these books specifically because everyone loves them so i'm waiting months for this audiobook so like i can be patient i can be patient okay i need to practice patience this one is angsty it's a bully romance childhood crush a dark read and who is this steamy, steamy read? I decided to reread Barbarian Lover by Ruby Dixon. This is the third book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. Again, just a book that I was listening to before bed. This is Kira and Ahako's 
book. So book number three. Kira is the one that has the translator chip in her ear and she has not been able to get it out. And so she really wants to go to the elder's cave, which if you've read the books, you know what that is. Um, to get it removed. And Ahako has been like hardcore crushing on her and is like, okay, I will take you there. But she, because she is not able to have children, like um, doctors told her that she's infertile, like she doesn't want to get Ahako's hopes up or fall for him before residence can happen for him with somebody else. And she's like, I don't want to fall for this guy if he's not going to be my forever person because I cannot have children. So there's a lot going on in this one. It's a really fun read. This one is an alien romance, damaged heroine, faded mates, he falls first. And it's on Kindle Unlimited. Next, I have The Air Appearance Rejected Mate by Casey Wells. This is the second book in her five pack series. I loved book one when I read it earlier this year. So I decided to pick up book number two. This one was not my favorite compared to book number one. I was obsessed with book number one. This takes place in kind of like a wolf school setting um, where the hair, there's like two different classes of wolves in this pack. You have like the elite, like powerful ones. Um, and then you have kind of like the lower class, which um, like they live in trailers and they don't associate themselves with the upper class of wolves. Basically, you kind of can figure out what the hero is. He's the heir apparent, so he's gonna be alpha one day, and he finds out that he is faded mates with one of the women from the like lower class. So this one was interesting. It's just not my favorite compared to the first book, but I will be continuing on with the series. I've heard great things about the other books. So um, this one has a rejected mate trope, shifter romance and there is a surprise baby so i'm letting y'all know that next is defender of walls by tanya bird this is the first book in the kingdom of wall series i honestly thought that this was a fantasy book and it's kind of like historical dystopian if that makes sense that's the way i can picture it. it's not fantasy it could take place on a fantasy world there's like no magic so it's like low stake fantasy possibly i don't know it doesn't really say what it is, I more picture it as a historical dystopian book. I don't know if it's our world or this fantasy world or what it is, but anyway, the, in this world, let's just say it's a world, it's our world, a uh, fantasy world. There are, like like the last book I talked about, you have like the elite and you have the poorer class and there's a wall separating them. The poor class makes all the food, makes all the goods, grows all the crops, but they have to give them to the upper class and they don't get like any food, like at all. They're all starving skeletons, essentially. Kind of like District 12, okay? The heroine of the story, this book starts out with her trying to help her brother who's trying to sneak under the wall to go get some food, but then the wall collapses and her brother dies. A man is there to help like protect her from all of this. He's one of the defenders of the wall, protector of the wall. And ever since that day, like he can't help but protect and defend her. There is also like a little bit of a class difference because he is the son to like a very high and mighty general. Um, so he's kind of of the upper class and she's of the lower class on the other side of the wall. It's very interesting. I've never really read anything like it because again, it's like a dystopian historical. This one is a clean romance. So if you want something with no steam, you can check this one out. It's a historical romance and a post-apocalyptic. Ooh, then I have Feral by Trish Henrich. This is kind of like a fake mate, undercover fake mate. So the heroine is a human who works for this like artifact museum and they asked her to help this guy who's like a werewolf creature um, because one of the artifacts is like lost and they think it's affecting his people, like his pack. And so she goes undercover as his mate because they won't really accept anyone into the group if they're not like your mate. And then they actually figure out their fate of mates. If you want like a hot, fun monster read you can pick this one up okay it's fun um you have primal slash chasing fake mate because they have to be fake mates um knots if you know what a knot is if you know you know um mating by monsters paranormal romance shapeshifter and um he is a werewolf i had a fun time with that one it was good another fun one was baby moon or bust by ava hunter this one our heroine and hero have like a one night stand they don't really exchange names or numbers afterward and then the hero is at the bar that he owns and sees tell on the television that the heroine's like giving a house tour she's an interior designer but is giving a house tour and she's like six months pregnant and that's when they were together was six months ago. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's who she is. He goes to fly up to meet with her and um, basically finds out that she is on vacation, a baby moon, and goes with her to figure all this out. Cause he's like, is that my baby? 
because if that's my baby, I want to be a part of my baby's life. So um, the heroine is a very independent woman and she just planned on raising this baby by herself. She tried to reach out and find this man, but she couldn't, um, long story short. So the large portion of this book takes place when they're on vacation, getting to know each other all over again. I am in the total surprise baby mood. I love surprise baby romances. So this was actually really fun for me. I really liked the vacation setting. I loved like the pregnancy stuff. Like it was really fun. It was really fun. You have caretaking scenes. Um, mountain man, he is a mountain man, baby. Um, one bed in the hotel room, okay? Opposites attract, cause he's like this burly, tattooed lumberjack man and she's this frilly dressed, high heel wearing woman, okay? Pregnancy is in here. It's a summer read, a surprise baby, and it takes place on a vacation. I reread Barbarian Mine by Ruby Dixon, another Barbarian book. I spent a Barbarian book, book number four. One of my favorites, um, this one's about Rook and Harlow. Rook ends up kidnapping Harlow and um, there's this big language barrier between the two. It's one of my favorites. I love it a whole heck of a lot. It's such a good comfort read. These books just give me so much happiness. I don't know what it is. Like they're just so fun. For tropes for this one, alien kidnapping because he kidnaps her with Unkind Unlimited, there's a language barrier and it's obviously in a sci-fi alien romance. I just read that one to like help me calm down and fall asleep. <laughs> Next I have one of my most anticipated books of the year, Song of the Abyss by Emma Hamm came out months early. This was supposed to come out, I think it's September. And I think Emma Hamm just finished it and was like, here you go. And just like dropped it. <laughs> so um, I read this, I failingly buddy read it with Victoria. She read it, I think way before me, um, but this is on ebook and I've been struggling recently with like ebooks and stuff. So, um, but man, I'm struggling with ebooks, but I feel like I read this pretty fast for me struggling with ebooks right now. This is the second book in like her, what series is it called? Deep Waters series, which I love book one so much. I love this one as well. It's such a good read. The hero of the story, who's like this merman creature, has been tasked by his people to go kidnap the daughter to the leader of one of the underwater cities that is in this world. She's like revered to be his prized jewel. And so they're like, okay, we're gonna kidnap her and kind of like have her as ransom to like, I don't know, try and get this leader dude to do what we want. However, she wants to be taken. She's like, get me out of here. My my father is awful. Um, I cannot stand him. I am abused by him all the time. So get me out of here. So she goes with this merman willingly, who's like the biggest, scariest one of all. Um, and so this big, giant, scary merman ends up just becoming a total ultimate softie for this little human woman. And I love them so much. I love this one. That's all I want to say because I could talk about the book for forever, um, but I'll just list the tropes. Okay, you have assassin turned lover because he was literally sent to kill her. Okay. Um, cover lust. I'm obsessed with this cover. Um, he brushes her hair. There's a hair brushing scene. Height difference. He's like 18, 18 feet tall, long, whatever you want to say. And she's like five foot six or something. Like that's a big difference. Okay. Um, I hate everyone in the world, but you monster romance, romance with disability representation because our heroine is hard of hearing, which I loved that representation here. It was done so stinking well. And then the hero, um, also lost his arm in the last book. Like his arm got chopped off. Um, so, uh, he does not have an arm here down. So both of these characters, have disabilities and the way that both of them were discussed I felt like was a freaking plus so 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 amazing and you rarely see fantasy monster reads with disability representation so props to Emma Ham for including fantastic representation in this book I was obsessed with it and then my last trope in here is a romance with a villain the hero has been a villain so I'm a sucker for that this is ruling sick fan by Victoria Aveline the latest book in her Clicanian series I also loved this one. This is so good. Um, so this is book number seven. I do recommend you reading these books in order because you might be a little bit lost, especially you need to read, um, what was the book before this? I think like Resisting Maxu or something because the heroine of this book is introduced in that one. But I'm pretty sure this one is now my favorite in the series. I don't know. I feel like I like those more like primitive alien reads and this book takes place in one of the cities in Clicania where technology is like banned. Like they don't use technology at all. And all the other books in the series, like there's like the sliding doors and the keypads you have to type in, blah, blah, blah. It's very technologically advanced. And this one, like, no, it's because technology really affects these kind of like wyvern creatures that all of them ride. These, um, in the city, like all these people would like ride these like wyvern creatures. They cannot stand like the certain sounds or frequencies that um, technology gives off. So they don't have technology in the city, like at all. So 
anyway, the heroine of the story um, ends up getting kidnapped by Sixthand, who is like the ruler of this specific alien uh, city. And that's all I really want to say. Well, they figure out that they're fate of mates possibly. It's really, really good. I, I love this one. It's so good. And like, the f you need to go check out Victoria Evelyn's like um, fan art for this couple. It's absolutely drool worthy. Like, and I, I needed them in my life. Okay, I needed to read about them. For tropes, alien romance, arranged marriage, fated mates, grumpy sunshine. He's the grump, she's the sunshine. Um, royalty romance, uh, slow burn, stalker. Cause, oh my gosh, this hero has this one-way mirror into her bedroom and just has a chair sitting outside of it and just watches her all day long. Okay, so it's, it is stalking to me. Tails, the way this man uses his tail. Oh my word. Um, and a tatted hero. I love me a tatted hero. So mm, this one was delicious. And then the last two that I have to talk about are the two books that I read for the Be Me Up book club that Tiffany and I run. Um, we did a live show, our first live show for this read along that we're doing for the Horde Kings of Dakar series. We did Captive of the Horde King and Claimed by the Horde King. So books number one and two. So you can go check out that live show down below where we discuss both of those books. I had so much fun reading these with Tiffany and talking about them. Like this series is so sticking good. I'm having a blast rereading them. I've never listened to the first four books. So I'm actually having like a new experience with this. But this series is fantastic. If you want like top tier, one of the best in the romance series ever, you need to check this one out. And if you love fantasy romance, you will love this series because it reads like fantasy. It's like a fan, it's a fantasy book. It just takes place on another like planet world and it doesn't really talk about like sci-fi related things like at all. And that's all I really have to say about those two. They are rereads for me. And um, you can go check out that live show if you want to know Tiffany and I's thoughts. Anyways, that is my wrap up. Sorry for this unconventional setting, the glasses glare, the cat making noises, but I just was not feeling my best today, so. This is what you get. That's what happens sometimes when you're like chronically ill. You have days where like I planned on filming a lot today and that just ended up not happening. Not happening at all, but that's okay. You can pivot and do something else. And I have fun talking about all these books. So I, I just wanted to do that for y'all today. So anyways, let me know down below um, if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me the palm tree emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. There's the shaky camera, like I said. <laughs>